Okay, now that we've looked at both Cycles and BMesh, the two big additions to 2.63, now let's look at some various other features and changes in Blender 2.63, namely starting with sculpting. So a couple of things have happened to sculpting. Number one, we have support for sculpt hiding back. Uh, this is really, really great because what it allows us to do is hide portions of our mesh while sculpting to get in improved sculpting and viewport performance. The way this works is pretty pretty easy. We just simply hit H to bring up our crosshair on what we want to draw across to hide. If I just draw across, say, half of my model here, it will then hide those parts immediately and allow me to then just continue sculpting wherever I wish. If I hit Shift H, it allows me to reveal portions. So if I draw across here, it will reveal those parts. Or if I hit Alt H, it will bring all parts back. So again, it's H to hide, H to hide, Shift H to reveal, and Alt H to bring everything back. Pretty quick and easy, works great, uh, really particularly handy for getting improved performance. Next, one of my favorite things with sculpting that's been changed is we now have the clay strips brush back. Those of you that have done a lot of sculpting know how nice a clay strips brush can be and basically just allows you to do some very quick, easy sketching by lay laying down la uh, layers very quickly. And uh, if you want to, you can just add a new brush if you wish. It has its own icon, but right now it does not currently have a brush. So let's just choose the clay brush real quick. And then what we want to do is we can just change the tool type to be the new clay strips. It used to be that we had options down here in this panel to change the tool type. Well, these have now been moved underneath the brush menu where we now have all of these things that are available along with inside here. But the one of them now is the new scoop sculpt tool. So it used to be down here. Now it's inside the brush menu. So sculpt tool and we can see clay strips right here. We change that. It changes over to its own add on and or its own icon. And now we have a full clay strips tool. This is really, really good, really good for sketching and is, uh, you know, really a great improvement. And this came about if I, I hope that I'm quoting this right. And I apologize if I don't, but I believe this was developed by Jason Wilkins as part of his Google Summer of Code sculpting project last year. And so this has now been implemented in Blender 2.63 and is a welcomed addition. So that's uh, sculpt additions. Now let's take a look at a few other things. A couple of them are pretty minor, uh, which we can just jump into edit mode to demo. For one, you can see that underneath the remove, delete is now available as a menu since we have all these different options in here rather than being a single button and then being a pop-up. So that's just a slightly nice interface improvement. One other thing as far as the interface is concerned, in the prop viewport properties panel uh, in, we now have underneath mesh display, you can see that the normals, rather than being vertex and face normals and just kind of cluttering all this up, are now just simply icons right here. Makes it very, very clean and easy, saves a lot of space, and is much easier to find. So that's a nice little improvement. But the next big improvement that I want to talk about is the in the compositing section. And this is in the file output node. And I've prepared a little file for this. So file output node right here. And this is nothing more than the Blender uh, material preview scene again, same as I had before. But the file output node is really great if you're wanting to do a lot of rendering uh, and saving out files without having to worry about saving it out each time. So the way the file output node works basically is by taking your render output upon finishing the render and then saving it out to a predefined file and uh, with uh, any number that you want. So it's been improved because it now supports, um, for one, multiple files. So we can just in the side, the single file output node, let's just actually remove this and we'll actually tell you what, no, let me first show you how it works. So if we just go ahead and render this, so I'll just, I've got it just set to five samples, really, really low. And if I just set this to render, it will render in just a moment. And there we are. So now if we go ahead and let's just load up a um, inside the compositor here, let's just add in a image node and just click open. And now in the, the renders folder where I saved it, you'll now find a single EXR file that I saved out that then has all of these passes uh, set up. So you can just view them here with all the different passes, normal, Z, a, uh, alpha, 
ambient inclusion, etc. all the different passes and saved out automatically. So this is really great. The way that it works is let's just create this from scratch. So if I hit shift A, add in an output file output node, you can see it just adds this. I can just drop that on there. I can, if I select this and in the properties panel, so just by pressing in, I now have a series of options here under the active node settings. For one, I can change the node file format. So I could set this to say OpenEXR multi-layer if I wanted to save all of these out uh, into a single file. And then I can just add any number of inputs that I want and automatically just drag all these in. You'll notice that the input color changes based on the uh, noodle connected. So it automatically detects what type of data it needs to save. And there we go. Now I can just select this again. I could go through and name each one of these. So this would be AO. This one would be normal. Z and then alpha. And what it'll do is now that this is an open EX, open or open EXR multi-layer image, it will then save each one of these into a separate layer layer inside that open EXR, allowing me to have good full compositing control without having to re-render. And so this is uh, this file is then saved out upon the completion of the render, assuming that underneath post-processing you have compositing and enabled. This was a silly mistake that I made and it took up a bunch of the developer's time trying to track down a bug, which turned out to not be a bug. I simply didn't have this checked. So just be sure that you have that checked or this won't work. Um, let's see. Okay, if this is not an OpenEXR multilayer, so let's just say this is a PNG or something like that, you also have the additional options of setting whether or not you want to use the node format for each channel. So let's say for the AO pass, if I wanted to just use this as a different format for whatever reason, I could disable this option here and then I could set the format settings for this specific pass on its own. And I could do that for each one if I so chose. So that's the new multi-file output node. It's really, really great, uh, works pretty darn well and uh, is a definitely a great addition and great improvement over the previous version of the file output node. Uh, another thing that's been added to compositing that's really nice is the detach operator. So let's just say I have a color RGB curves in here and I want to detach this without destroying the links and without deleting the node. Well, you know that if I just hit X, I can delete the node. Or if I hit control X, I can remove the node while maintaining the link. But if I wanted to do if I wanted to disconnect the node and keep the node, there was not present currently a way to do that beforehand. Well, now there is. Uh, now you can just press Alt D, that will remove the connection, leaving the link between the original nodes and then give you your new node in grab mode. So very, very nice. Again, that's just Alt D to remove all connections, but not delete the actual node. Works really, really nicely. Uh, one other thing that's kind of related to compositing is now open or multi-threaded EXR support. So now when loading an EXR file, such as an HDRI map, a multi-layer EXR, those are now multi-threaded and so will load much faster on a multi-core machine. Uh, there's a lot of other little things here and there that have been added or changed, um, such as drag and drop support for external applications in, Lin in Linux, uh, drag and dropping image files from outside of Blender into the shader and texture nodes. So for example, if I have a material here and let's just pull up a image such as this one here that I just rendered out. If I just drag and drop that in there, it will add it as an image texture node. So that works really nice. Uh, full drag and drop support for that. Uh, various other improvements with the uh, NDOF devices or the 3D connection mice for support for those. Uh, one thing we've, that a lot of us have really been wanting for a long time is control middle click and drag for the zoom. You could already do this in the viewport, but you could never do it in the camera view. Well, now that has been added back. And one major thing that those of us that are modelers have been dying for for a long time is free edge extrusion support. So some of you may remember that when you extrude an edge, previously it would extrude it kind of along the average normals of some kind, and it would just send it off in all kinds of weird directions and was super annoying. Well, that has now been removed, and now when you do an edge extrusion, it's just a free edge extrusion, just as if you had grabbed that edge and works much nicer. So you no longer have to, uh, as I used to do, uh, just kind of wrote it into muscle memory, extrude, right-click to cancel, and then move because of the, the silly normals. Now you can just simply extrude, and it works 
much, much nicer. So that's basically it for 2.63. There's uh, numerous other bug fixes, a few additions here and there. Uh, I encourage you to browse through all the release notes. I'm, you're sure to find something that I missed or didn't cover. Uh, there's a lot of different things. We've got several new import and export add-ons, um, some additional support for things like renderfarm.fi now has cycles rendering support. So that add-on has been updated. Some unit display options in 3D v in the 3D view have been fixed. Uh, all kinds of different things. Uh, a huge number of bug fixes. As it says, over 150 bug fixes. Here you can see the complete list of everything that was fixed. Uh, lots of different features. So 2.63 is really a, a great, great release in uh, for Blender. And hope that you enjoy it. Of course, uh, feel free to leave comments below uh, below the videos if you have any questions. Uh, go download it. Uh, support the develop developers. Thank the developers. And if if you're looking for a an additional way to support the development team and just Blender as a whole, I do encourage you to go over to the development page on blender.org and join the Blender Development Fund. This is a monthly donation that you can subscribe to. So you can subscribe to donate anywhere from five to 250 euros monthly. It's just an automatic deduction. You can see that we already have a hundred, or the, not we, but the, the Blender Foundation has 181 members that are contributing 1,800 plus euros per month already. You can see some of the reports for things that have been added. Uh, currently, there uh, we've got full 3,000 euros going to Daniel Greenrich for improving the smoke simulation animation inside smoke domains, and another 3,000 going to Jerome Baker uh, for the new tile-based compositor. And so both of these are geared for 2.64 and... Uh, should be really, really awesome. Some of the sculpt improvements, such as the clay strips brush and sculpt hiding, were done by Nicholas Bishop, again, based on the Blender Development Fund. So if you like seeing all of these new features in Blender and want to find a way to support it, I encourage you to go for the Blender Development Fund. Definitely worth it. Developers deserve it. They're doing awesome work. Big props to them. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.